Hello and welcome back to Hunt Hill at Home. I am out here at the Frog Pond, which is right across from the prairie on our new Hunt Hill trails. And it is noisy around here. Uh, I bet you can already guess what this video is going to be about. Hopefully you can hear the sound in the background. I'll be quiet just a second so you can listen. So we've got a bunch of frogs that are calling. How can we tell these frogs apart? Today in this video, I'm going to tell you a few tricks on listening to frog calls, uh, some resources on how to learn more about frog calling, and if you want to, some ways to become a citizen science and actually monitor frog calls. Uh, so, Hopefully you'll be able to hear me the whole time. I know it's windy. I put up a little screen to hopefully block out some of the wind, but we're going to get a lot of noises going on. Before we begin, I've got our joke of the day. So, why are frogs always happy? They eat what bugs them. So, I want to thank a few people for uh, suggesting this to me. One is Mark Sauer. He actually gave me some information about frog mnemonics, which are um, ways to remember what the sounds of each frog sound like. And he also gave me what's called the phonology of frog calls. And this is basically a grid telling me when to expect different frogs to be calling. He got both of these from the Frog and Toad Survey from the uh, Wisconsin DNR and it's available at wiatri.net. I'll post that afterwards so you can look it up. I also want to thank all of the people on Facebook who suggested that I do this video. I think it's a really great topic and a really fun one to learn about. Frogs are a really important indicator species for us. They tell us a lot about how our environment is doing and if there are pollutants in our water. Frogs are very sensitive to pollutants because they've got really thin, absorbent skin. This is important for them because frogs need to be able to breathe through their skin. And they also do a lot of absorbing of water through their skin. Now, I'm going to talk about a few frogs that you can expect to find around this area. And I will show you some pictures as well. So let's start with that. All right, I'll get this nice and close to the camera. This right here is our wood frog. The wood frog is easy to identify with its mask like a bandit. And this one is very common around this area. You can find it in the woods. And it sounds like a lazy duck. It makes kind of a rut, rut sound. Uh, I can hear a couple of them in the pond right now. This frog looks similar to our wood frog, but this one, the mask extends past its eye and down its body. This is the chorus frog, and it does a creak sound, kind of like the sound you get from running your finger down a comb. You can hear the sound of the chorus frog as well here. This frog is my favorite. It is the spring peeper and it does the high-pitched peep sound. It sounds a little bit like shaking bells. If you listen closely you'll hear the spring peeper in my video. I'm going to let this wind pass a little bit because it is noisy. So the spring peeper is easy to identify by looking at its back. It's got an X on its back, which none of the other Wisconsin frogs has. This frog is our northern leopard frog. The northern leopard frog makes kind of a snore grunt sound. 
And some people say it sounds a little bit like if you were to uh, run your finger down a balloon. Now this one is very common to find around here. This one is our pickerel frog. And while it does look like the leopard frog because it has those same spots on it, its spots are a lot more square. Can you see both of them in this picture? And they tend to be larger as well. The pickerel frog has a softer, subtler snore than the leopard frog. Here is our American toad. You find these all over the place, often on your driveway. The American toad, when it's calling, makes a long trilling sound. And if you hear it at night, it may make you think of a UFO. It sounds kind of otherworldly. Lastly, we've got some tree frogs. This one is our gray tree frog. And then we also have Cope's gray tree frog. They are hard to tell the difference between because they can vary a lot within their species and they can look very similar. But both tree frogs have a high trill sound in their calls. Now, these are just the frogs that you could find right now singing in Wisconsin in April. There are other frogs that you might find later on. Wisconsin has 12 different types of frogs. We have uh, the bullfrog, we have the mink frog, we have the green frog, uh, and in some counties there's also the cricket frog. The cricket frog is going, um, it's endangered, so it is very rare to find. Now, when you are looking for frogs, you want to be looking when the conditions are right. These aren't perfect conditions today, but there are some good things about it. So, uh, some things that you want to check when you are doing some recording of frog sounds are the air temperature, the water temperature, and the wind speed. So let's check each of those. I've got some tools with me to help. We'll start out with the wind speed. So this is a really cool thing that I recently just uh, found that Hunt Hill had, and it is called a wind meter. Now the way this wind meter works is I actually hold it up to the wind, and so that it's facing the wind. Let's see if I can position it right. And in the, little, in the back here, there are these two little holes that the wind goes through. The wind comes up through the center of here, and it pushes up this little styrofoam ball. Then, as the wind is pushing it up, I can record how high it goes. Now, if the wind is faster than 10 miles per hour, then I have to switch to the high range. And so I cover the top with my finger, and it will go up to the higher numbers. Let's see if I can get a good reading. The trick is, today, we've been kind of fluctuating between blasts of really high winds and then no wind at all. So let's see what we get. So right now we've got pretty low wind. Oh, and now it's getting higher. It's about four and a half. Oh, and it's higher, almost six. Seven. So we're getting a lot of different wind speeds here. When I measured it earlier, I got it up to 12 miles per hour. But it looks like we've been kind of uh, getting generally to about seven miles per hour. So that is all right for measuring wind. wind. If the wind gets to be much higher than that, it's not ideal situation for monitoring uh, the frogs. Let's check our air temperature. Now the ideal air temperature is going to be 50 degrees or higher. I have my air temperature right here. My shadow's blocking it. Okay, there we go. So 
if we look at this one, it looks like it's at about 50, 54 degrees. So that's not too bad. It's higher than 50 degrees, which is what we need for recording uh, frogs. Now we're going to check our water temperature. So this is, can we get, there we go. This is where I set my thermometer. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a whole bunch of little mosquito larvae in here. Buckle your seat belts because it's going to be a mosquito-y summer, I think. So, <laughs> where's the camera? There we go. So it's about 40 degrees in the water right now. Pretty chilly for the frogs, but they're making it. Now, some people do this on a regular basis, and they are part of a citizen science group who monitor ponds in their local area to see how the frogs are doing. This gives uh, scientists really good data to help them figure out how the populations are doing in general. You can be a citizen scientist too. I'll give you some resources on how to find out all about um, surveying frog populations and some ways for you to get better at identifying their sounds. So let's see what kinds of frogs we've got in this pond right behind us. I'll give you a second to just listen. So, I don't know what all you can hear, but what I hear is uh, the one that stands out to me is the one that sounds like you're running your finger down a comb. That one is our chorus frog. The other one that stands out to me is the really, really high pitched one that's doing a lot of peeping. That one is our spring peeper. Then the lower pitched one, the one that sounds like quacking, that is our wood frog. Do you hear any other frogs? You might, I'm not an expert at this. If you hear any, please send in your comments and let me know. Otherwise, I hope you get a chance to go out and see what kinds of frogs that you find in your own backyard or in the ponds around you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.